Antarctica. With an area of some 14 million square kilometers, this vast, bleak continent is twice the size of Australia. For countless eons, it has been empty, and only in this century has man managed to gain a foothold on the huge ice sheet, which covers all but 1% of the land mass. Australia, one of 11 nations conducting scientific research in Antarctica, maintains three permanent bases, Mawson, Davis and Casey on the rim of the continent and one on Macquarie Island. At Casey in recent years, research has involved the extraction of ice cores from hundreds of meters below the surface of the ice cap. A thermic drill is used to melt a circular ring around the core which is pulled up in sections and packaged for shipping back to Australia, where hundreds of them are kept in cold storage for future study. The ice cap itself is enormous. At some parts of the continent, it is almost five kilometers thick. This tremendous bulk of ice, some 30 million cubic kilometers of it, holds 90% of all the world's fresh water. Closer to the edge of the continent, the ice slopes down to the sea to form a shelf. Because the movement of the ice towards the sea at different levels can be calculated, scientists can also trace the theoretical path of particles of snow falling at various points over the years, so that when core samples are taken, a reasonable estimate of the age of the ice at different depths can be made. Now this particular core comes from the end of the last ice age, about 10,000 years ago. And when you look more closely at them, they really do become quite fascinating because each layer is virtually a slice of history. It corresponds to the annual snowfall in Antarctica. And Australian scientists working with these cores have been able to extract information on what the climate was like over a period of thousands of years. Now you might say, well, the climate in Antarctica is, is cold all the time. And that's uh, fairly true. But uh, there are degrees of coldness, and a variation of only one or two degrees in Antarctica can affect the whole world. So these cores become, in effect, a record of not only what the world's climate was like in the past, but also a possible indicator of what future climatic conditions could be like as a result of better understanding of what caused those changes. By melting down small layers of the core, and then using a mass spectrometer to measure the ratio of oxygen isotopes present in the water, scientists at the Antarctic Division's Melbourne laboratories can plot the average surface temperature at the time the snow was formed. A core almost 500 meters deep, dating back to before the birth of Christ, has produced a graph which shows clearly how climatic fluctuations in Antarctica correspond with known variations in the Northern Hemisphere. For instance, during this long warm period of several hundred years, in the first millennium AD, grapevines flourished in England and Greenland was colonized. In this extremely cold period, the Little Ice Age, during the late 18th and early 19th centuries, the Thames froze over. Europe shivered and people in Greenland and Iceland starved. But this is a more recent core sample, which is actually only about uh, 20 or 30 years old. But you can see quite clearly that it's, it's closer to the surface because the snow hasn't been compacted down as it would be over thousands of years deeper down in the ice cap. This is also taken from nearer the, uh, nearer the coast where you get a summer melt. So that you can see there you've got summer melt, winter snow, summer melt, winter snow, and so on quite clearly defined. One of the interesting aspects that's come out from uh, research with these more recent core samples has um, been in studying the radioactivity of, of them. Uh, 1954 showed up very strongly as an increase, a big increase in radioactivity that corresponded exactly with the first nuclear test in the Southern Hemisphere, which only goes to show that even the Antarctic uh, isn't immune from radioactive fallout. To test the ice for any impurities, the core is first cut and then shaved down with a planer to present a flat surface for two small electrodes, which give a measurement of the electrical conductivity as well as the relative acidity of the core, and also another method of dating the various layers. 
Well, analysis of the water from melted down ice cores has shown it to be amongst the purest that you'd find anywhere in the world, about a thousand times more pure, for instance, than, uh, than tap water. But one of the more interesting pieces of research soon to be done on ice cores revolves around the tiny air bubbles that are held in suspension in the ice. And these bubbles are, in fact, uh, minute samples of what the atmosphere was like thousands of years ago. And measurement of the amount of carbon dioxide in that air should give us the answer to a vexing question. If it's significantly less than present day levels, then predictions of a dangerous buildup in CO2 levels in our atmosphere uh, as a result of all the fossil fuels that we're burning, uh, a buildup which incidentally could alter our future climate, uh, could be proven to be correct. The research even involves a study of the crystal structure of the ice, as their shape and size affect the rate of slip and movement of the ice cap towards the sea big crystals move more slowly. By taking a very thin slice and putting it in a light polarizing instrument, the crystals can be clearly seen and one more piece of information added. Well, the work on ice cores is of course only a very small aspect of Australia's scientific research program at its four Antarctic bases. It is, however, producing valuable results and it's internationally recognized as providing a significant contribution to the better understanding of the patterns of climate and weather that affect the whole world.